Welcome, everybody. Today's video is called Rebellion. We're going to be taking a look at, as the scripture says, the Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God. Amen. The word of God is like a double-edged sword, piercing even between the bone and the marrow. And so the Holy Spirit looks into topics deeper, amen, than we do. Remember, said the spirit of man understands the things of man, but the spirit of God alone understands the things of God. So without the Holy Spirit, we couldn't understand anything at all. I mean, not a single thing. I wouldn't be able to speak here without the help of the Holy Spirit at all. That's why Jesus said, <coughs> Amen, uh, uh, Mark chapter 13, <coughs> Think not what you should say, for it shall be given to you on that hour what you should say by the Holy Spirit of God. Praise be to God. So we give thanks to the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the one who teaches us uh, and comforts us. Uh, the one that Jesus sent. Uh, praise be to God. Uh, right. So listen. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns uh, from heaven above with wisdom. Power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Wisdom. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. From heaven and earth with we, some power and love, our God is an awesome God. Praise be to God. Amen. So, looking at the different, sorry, uh, I get warm and, and a bit sleepy because I get up really early, so I take my top off to keep the fresh air. So, if I feel cold, what it does, it keeps me awake. Praise be to God. So, let's look at some of the accounts in the scripture whereby, amen, it shows us God's attitude to rebellion and see if we can see that rebellion inside our, our lives. Now remember, these scriptures are not for condemnation because there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. It's not for condemnation, it's for encouragement. It helps me be alert and aware that the Bible said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Without the word of God, I wouldn't be able to see the rebellion that's inside my life, like the time which I've shared with you before when Jesus uh, appeared to me um, when I was praying and studying in the afternoon in my living room by the balcony door and uh, um, to my surprise said to me, don't be a hypocrite uh, many years ago and it totally made me feel ill and I couldn't see where I was a hypocrite. But after two or three days, as the illness began to pass, I understood where hypocrisy, um, had, like Jesus said to the disciples, take heed for the leaven of the Pharisees, uh, the leaven of hypocrisy which had got into my life and helped me now to be alert. And that's what the teaching of the Word of God does. It's not to condemn you, it's that you might be alert to the rebellion which is in all of our lives. Praise be to God. Um, <clears throat> Isaiah Sorry, Jeremiah 17 verse 9 says, The heart of man, which is me and you, is desperately wicked. That means there's a, in our heart there's a desperateness to do wickedness. Real desperate. And deceitful above all things. Who can know it? I mean, you're not able to know the rebellion that's inside of your heart. Only the Holy Spirit is able to reveal it to you. That's why without the Holy Spirit... We can't make it. So let's look at the first example of <coughs> rebellion. The children of Israel <coughs> in um, Exodus chapter 32 had come out of the Egypt, had been saved, had experienced God, His power, have a great past and a great leader instead of Moses and Aaron. Everything um, of the recipe and a recipe that was needed to be successful what happens when Moses goes up the mountain in Exodus chapter 32 to um, have a meeting with God? He is delayed according to the time that they thought he should have been back. And from that, they weren't prepared to wait anymore. So they wanted to appoint themselves another leader, another God, which they did um, with the golden calf. So what does that teach us? <clears throat> when we're not willing... To wait upon God. Psalm 37 said this. Uh, wait upon the Lord. And again I say wait. Uh, 
They weren't prepared to wait. They thought they'd lost their leader. I mean, if your leader is with you every single day and then he disappears for over a month, of course, they would start now to have doubts. Uh, <clears throat> but from that doubts, they weren't prepared to wait. And so they now, amen, set up a shiny golden calf. How does that relate to us? We're not prepared to wait on God. It could be you're not prepared to wait on God for your wife. Okay? You now, instead of waiting on God to bring a choice for you, you now choose the shiny golden calf. I mean, something that appeals to your senses rather than wait upon the Lord. That's why the Bible says, uh, Apostle Paul says, Looking not on the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen, that's by faith. Trust in God. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are unseen are eternal. And because they, they couldn't wait upon God, they chose uh, something that they could see to be their God. And that's what people do concerning can be waiting for your wife. You choose uh, something other than like Esther. Esther waited upon God. And God chose the mad, amen, a Syrian king which she never would have chosen, but she accepted it because she knew it was from the Lord. She was prepared to wait upon the Lord's decision. It could be the job. Instead of waiting upon God, amen, <coughs> you end up choosing something that's not what God wanted for you. And it could be something glamorous and shiny like the golden calf. Instead of waiting for God's choice, like God said to Samson, because Samson wouldn't allow God to choose a wife, amen, <clears throat> he ended up choosing something that was golden and, and shiny like the golden calf, something that looked beautiful to the eyes. And as a result, <clears throat> God said, because he chose the flesh part of the Philistines, God now, amen, took uh, his, his eyesight out. So it can happen in many different ways. A, a, a part of you that refuses to be patient wait upon God, can be classed as rebellion. Remember Jesus said, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Israel turned to worship the gold and calf because they weren't prepared to wait enough time. Not wait a short time, wait the required amount that God wants you to submit to his will. There's the difference. Amen. Many of us can wait, but are we prepared to wait uh, upon the God's timing? Okay, and that's what the children of Israel weren't prepared to do. And then um, sin with the golden calf. Uh, so remember when you become impatient with God's plan for your life. Uh, amen. And you can feel yourself beginning to want to choose something from your own mind and heart. Be careful that it's not a golden calf. Uh, because from that, it was classed from God as rebellion. But of course, because we don't see that we've made a golden calf, we don't think it is. But it is to choose. I remember when I wasn't prepared to wait upon God anymore for my wife, Lynn. I decided to go now and to choose something that I thought was right. And in the Bible study, one of the youth um, that I was in charge of the youth ministry... A lovely sister had a dream, and the dream she, God spoke to her and saw me at a bus stop, and the voice said, tell um, Brother Elijah, I'm going to kill him, because he's not, amen, accepting the choice that I have wanted him to wait for. And of course, when she told me that dream, I went home and cried like a baby, and I waited upon the Lord. I chose God's path, not, amen, the golden Calf, praise be to God, that actually we make ourselves. These golden calves is things that we've made ourselves. But when God chooses, it's something that he has made for you. And that normally means it's not something you would choose. That's why God put Adam to sleep when he um, made Eve. Amen. And then woke him up. Uh, he had no part in it. That's when you can tell it is not a golden calf. Many believers, even people that are believers, praise be to God, that marry um, <clears throat> and that are both believers, 
sometimes do not realize it can be a golden calf marriage. Uh, praise be to God. Because somewhere inside of them, they would rather choose themselves than rather have God choose. An example was Hosea. God told him to go and to marry the harlot. Amen. And of course, he um, submitted. So, rebellion. Amen. And remember, rebellion is the sin of witchcraft which got them killed. Amen. You can experience an early death because of rebellion that you don't realize is rebellion. The second one was Numbers chapter 11 when the children of Israel, <coughs> amen, begin to mourn about no food and water. And it's uh, in chapter 11 that said they were seeking complaints. Amen. Meaning that you have a heart where you like complaining. Um, a lot, so much so that they were actually seeking for things to complain about. Sometimes I have found myself complaining when there's nothing to complain about. It's almost like there's been some part of me that almost just wanted to find something to complain about when there was nothing to complain about. And that's what um, Numbers 11 encouraged the wrath of God to class that as rebellion again, that which brought in death. <laughs> Now, you may not die physically, but something inside you can die. Your prayer life can begin to die. Your, the, the revelation of life and reading your scripture can begin to die. The relationship with your children in a spiritual realm can begin to die. Amen. Prosperity that was increasing can begin to die. Death can come in many shapes and forms that you need to recognize, which can come just because of complaining. Apostle Paul says, giving thanks in all things, let everything be done with thanksgiving and not murmuring, which God classes as a rebellion. Then it says that those, Numbers chapter 11, who were at the edge of the wilderness, God killed and destroyed, not wanting to be in the middle of the Bible study, not wanting to be in the center of the church, wanting to get up and praise and to testify Amen. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to, not maybe, going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Those who don't want to be, want to be at the edge of things, God classed that as um, rebellion. And he sent the angel of the Lord to begin to kill those who were at the edge of the camp. It's not enough to sit on the feds. You've God classes that as rebellion. Amen. Then um, it said that they cultivated cravings. <sighs> Praise be to God. Apostle Paul, I said, I have learned to be content in whatever condition I've learned um, that I find myself in. Cultivating cravings can mean that instead of eating the simple things in life, you, you'd, you start developing a craving for McDonald's, a craving for chocolate, a craving for the Indian, a craving for curry, curry, a craving for Chinese, a craving for Indian, amen, a craving for Coca-Cola, ice cream. You do so much today to cultivate cravings, not just to have a craving for something, but to cultivate it. You don't learn, amen, as possible, and Jesus says, crucify the flesh, learn to say no, learn to fast, learn to decultivate the cravings that you've developed, that God classes as rebellion and killed thousands, amen, who were craving um, for um, food in the wilderness, praise be to God. And the other, the last thing was then they begin to ask for unrealistic things, they asked for fish in the desert, there's no fish in the desert. Amen. And that's what we, um, God classes rebellion will begin to ask things from God, which is unrealistic. Uh, Lord, I want two million pounds. I want this and I want that. Uh, instead of being content with the things that God gives to you, that, amen, God classed as uh, rebellion. So there we see from numbers, seeking complaints, being at the edge of things, cultivating cravings and asking for Things beyond your measure, things were are unrealistic, praise be to God. All is classed as uh, rebellion, praise be to God. You may want to be the pastor, and God might not want you to be the pastor. Amen. You may amen, desire a um, $20,000 job instead of 
a 15,000. Amen. Learning to understand what the will of God is for your life, which Jesus did. He prayed in Gethsemane until he understood and accepted the will of God above his will. Praise be to God. Then Numbers chapter 13, where you have the spies begin to unbelieve. Be why? Because the giants of the land. When you start to doubt God because of giant problems, <clears throat> that's a sign of uh, rebellion in your life. And God classes that is no excuse. Praise be to God. Just because you've got a huge problem is coming to your life, it doesn't make it an excuse to, to begin to doubt. Amen, God. And that's rebellion. Whenever I start to feel doubt coming to my life, God is showing me I am rebelling against Him. Remember, the heart of man is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? And that doubt that the children of Israel had when they began to doubt God with the, issue, with the spies in um, Numbers uh, chapter 13, God now amen, uh, made them wander in the wilderness uh, for 40 years. If you find yourself wandering from pillar to post, uh, from job to job, Amen. Uh, not really knowing what's going on. That can be because, uh, amen, of unbelief, which God classes as rebellion. And we must repent of that. We must believe God. I didn't feel like doing this video. Some, a lot of times I don't feel like it because of whatever troubles or uh, things I'm going through. But I respond by faith. Even if I'm tired, I get up and by faith, I believe God is there for me. No matter what problem comes in your life, uh, it's not, amen, accepted by God because you've got giant problems that you begin to unbelieve. That is rebellion. Remember the Bible says rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. And then you have Korah in Numbers chapter 16. Korak's rebellion, amen, where he wanted to challenge uh, the leadership of Aaron and for Moses. He said, okay, you know, jobs. Amen. Ambition, all that ambition can be classed by God as a rebellion. Because if God doesn't want you to have that promotion, amen, God may want you to be in a humble place. Like Jesus said um, um, in Philippians chapter 2, he counted it um, not equal, robbery to be called equal of God, but took upon himself the role of a servant. Uh, Amen. He that is least among you shall be called the greatest. Uh, amen. And sometimes God, Jesus may want you, amen, to have a low job. What does James say? Rejoice ye that are lowly and that God has exalted you. For God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith. Amen. And that's him. Um, when you don't accept that as a blessing, Praise be to God, and uh, you can become like Korak, an ambition now, amen, <coughs> can God class as rebellion. That's why John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, uh, what did he say? Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, and he's told his disciples to go and to follow him. That's someone now that is not being led by ambition. But in many churches today, when someone may visit, Who's anointed, praise be to God. Remember, Jesus said to the Israelites, so he told, he said, Until you learn to say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, you shall in no wise see me. Rebellion, praise be to God. But John the Baptist didn't. John the Baptist gave his disciples to, to Jesus. He said, you know, Go and follow him. Behold, he said to the disciples, The Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. John humbled himself, uh, amen, uh, when he was in the presence of someone more anointed uh, than himself, praise be to God. And, uh, and those people that cannot humble themselves uh, when God brings a man or a woman God into your life, uh, amen, and you treat them differently the way that God wants to treat them, then, uh, praise be to God, uh, it can be classed as uh, rebellion, amen. I, I love it in church. I am, I am standing at the back on a Sunday and I am the doorkeeper, opening the door for people and closing the door for people. 
And the psalmist said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Uh, praise be to God. Amen. Be content in the church of God with being a doorkeeper. Amen. Uh, praise be to God. Then you have even Moses. Moses. Amen. And Joshua in Numbers chapter 11 when the two prophets were prophesying around the camp. Joshua wanted to put him in prison. Joshua didn't like the prophecies. So it shows you if Joshua did, it means the leaders, uh, amen, can be stubborn against prophecies uh, coming into the church. Uh, so much so it caused an issue, amen, with Moses and with Joshua. That Joshua had to be rebuked uh, uh, by Moses. And even Moses began to doubt God. Amen. And he smote the rock, which of course now God classed as rebellion and punished him never to enter the promised land. Uh, so you see, rebellion can touch all of us uh, from many different depths of life. Praise be to God. Amen. From the leaders uh, can suffer from rebellion. Amen. Korak, uh, again, one of the priests suffered from rebellion. And the people doubted God in unbelief, and it was classed as rebellion, and seeking to complain and mourning that you're not as prosperous as you deserve to be classed as rebellion. And uh, remember the golden calf, the shiny things in our life that we establish rather than having to wait upon the will of God. Praise be to God. Now, fear. Numbers chapter 14, verses 9. It says uh, that fear is a rebellion. Remember <coughs> Job, in Job chapter 3, verse 24, Job said, The thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. Praise be to God. Fear, again now, can be classed as, as rebellion. Amen. And, and um, praise be to God. Revelations, when John meets Jesus in heaven, he falls down his dead, and Jesus says to him, Fear not, only believe. When you begin to fear, you start to rebel against God because it's impossible to please God except by faith. And so if you look upon your fear as rebellion, it will help you to strive as Apostle Paul said. I, I have not yet apprehended, but I strive towards the high calling that's inside of Jesus. Praise be to God. Amen. So let's look at some of the cases, uh, amen, uh, that affect the family. Remember, Jesus says, Faint not that I am come to bring peace, but I am come to bring a sword to set at variance, a daughter against the mother, and a son against uh, the father. What does that mean? Jesus, when it sees rebellion inside of our hearts, and we don't address it, like we're listening to this video, and we don't go back and pray and seek God for help. Help me, Lord, not to be rebellious, Lord. Help me to wait upon you and not to make up shiny golden calves for myself. Help me not to complain, to seek complaints, to be content with the things I have. Help me, Lord, not to be ambitious in the house of God and to be raised up in pride. And help me, Lord, not to fall into unbelief because of the giant problems that are inside my land. If you can accomplish that, praise be to God, then you'll be well on the road to protecting yourself from rebellion, which is in all of our hearts. Praise be to God. And that's what Jesus is saying, that I think not I've come to bring a peace, but a sword to put a father against a daughter. Why? Because God sees the rebellion is not being dealt with. And if the rebellion inside of us is not being acknowledged, not being fasted and prayed about. What happens is that Jesus now brings that sword, amen, to teach us, <clears throat> praise be to God, not to, to be a stiff-necked and rebellious people. Sorry if I'm wondering because I feel like I'm nodding off here. Hallelujah. But re remember, in obeying God, it's not whether you're tired or not, is doing the thing that God requires. It doesn't matter if it sounds good. It's being obedient to God because by disobeying, the Bible says, is this the sin of witchcraft? It's rebellion. Like Ezekiel, which Sister Kate always made a comment, why did I keep bringing it up? When 
he, he, God asked him to bake the cakes from the poo, and he said, no, that's rebellion. I remember today I saw one of my little children I dropped a, a poo on the floor that had become hard. When I picked it up, I felt the Spirit say, eat it. And it didn't bother me. I knew that God didn't want me to eat it because he told me, but he was testing me. And I realized inside of me that I would obey what God said because I know to say no to God in any matter is rebellion. Jesus says, I call you friends if you do whatever. I command you to do like God tested Abraham and God tested Ezekiel and God tested me and, and I really meant it. God, if you wanted me to eat the poo, I would obey you. It is not about the poo. It's about the obedience to God, a heart that doesn't want uh, to um, rebel. And of course, you see the same with King Saul's sons died because of his rebellion. The sin of Akon, his family were all killed because of his, his rebellion. A rebellion causes our families to suffer. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And I, I, I remember <clears throat> when I was beginning to really grow in God many years ago, I could see sometimes when I used to trickle back and become slightly rebellious, my children would suffer tremendously. They would get my, one of my sons was mugged at knife point three times in one week because I chose to be rebellious. And I could see how my rebellion was affecting my family, praise be to God. Amen. So, amen. It's, it's good to, to realize that. Because when you realize that, you don't want your family to be affected by your rebellion. So I make sure I do my utmost best, uh, like Jesus says, to become obedient to him in all things. Uh, and that is uh, that. Of course, that's why God said to Abraham, I love Abraham because he commands his children after him. There's no rebellion in the family. And if there is, it can be rectified. Remember the Bible said the righteous man stumbles seven times, but the Lord upholds him with his hand. That's the good news. When you give your all to Jesus, uh, he'll guide you through your rebellion. But if you do not give your all to Jesus, he won't guide you through your problem. You'll end up in difficulties, praise be to God, whereby you're going to... Oh, sorry, I nodded off again. You're going to praise God. I forgot what I was saying Amen. Yeah, if you don't give your all to Jesus, what happens is that when you experience the rebellion that's in your heart, your rebellion will overcome you. Remember this idea that the righteous man stumbles seven times, but the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have got a rebellious heart, but God sustains me in my rebellion. Amen. That the obedience always, amen, travails and always overcomes. Not because of me, not because of my strength, but because of the grace of God. Why? Because I give my all. If you don't give your all to Jesus, God will make sure that the rebellion inside you, remember, think not I am come to bring peace, but I am come to bring a sword to make a ch child rebel and amen with its father. You won't have the strength to keep peace in your own if you don't give your all. And in that all, God promises to guide us through our rebellious heart. So remember, to watch out for the golden calves, rebellion. To watch out for the complaining, rebellion. To watch out from doubt and unbelief due to big problems, rebellion. Amen. And remember, ambition. Amen. Because that's also rebellion. It's good to feel good just the way that you are. Well, that's it. Uh, God is good. Praise be to God. And, and um, it, again, thank you to those who watch, you know, um, Kate and Praise be to God, Mike Marks, Tammy, all my love to you and gratitude in my prayers that this year will be a very special new year. That God, amen, will do exciting things for you that you'll see greater and deeper things this year than you've ever done in your life. Amen. Greater things in your children's lives, in your spouse's lives, in your wife's and husband's lives, in your parents' lives, in your church lives, in your health. Uh, like John chapter 1. Jesus said to Nathaniel, you shall see greater things than these. And I really apologize 
for nodding off, I can't help it. But one thing I won't do is stop the video and go back again. Amen. I'm content, whatever condition. What's more important to me than anything is that you and me are kept from the rebellion that's deep inside of our hearts. Uh, amen. That we will be wise and alert to our unbelief. Amen. To our complaints. Uh, praise be to God. And for the golden calves that we so willingly set up when we're not willing to wait upon the Lord. Praise be to God. Isn't God good? God is so good. God is so merciful. Amen. Pray for our children and our wives and our husbands and our churches. And don't forget that Jesus loves you very, very, very much indeed. Praise be to God. God loves you. In Jesus' name.